I rise to give my maiden speech, and it is an absolute honour to follow the new member for Glasgow South. He spoke passionately about his constituency, and his love for his constituents is absolutely clear for all to hear. It's also an honour to follow maiden speeches from members from Ipswich, Spelthorne, Telford, Edinburgh East and Musselburgh, Mid Bedfordshire, Cardiff West, Wolverhampton North East and Poole, each in their own way, Madam Deputy Speaker, they are an act to follow. I want to start by expressing my thanks to the people of Hazelgrove constituency for placing their trust in me. That trust is a profound responsibility and I am committed to repaying it through hard work integrity and service to my community. I'd like to acknowledge the work of my predecessor, William Ragg, who served in Parliament from 2015 until standing down at the last election. He stood up to those in power when he felt it was needed and spoke openly about poor mental health in a way I'm sure will have really helped break down stigma. On behalf of all residents of Hazelgrove, I wish him all the best for the future. I accept, Madam Deputy Speaker, that I may be a little biased, but Hazelgrove is quite clearly the finest constituency in the land. <laughs> it ranges from central Stockport out to the edge of the Peak District, taking in the communities of Breadbury, Bosden Farm, Compstall, Greatmoor, Hawkgreen, Heverley, High Lane, Littlemoor, Marple, Marplebridge, Mellor, Millbrow, Norbury, Offerton, Romley, Strines, Woodley, and some but not all, of Hazelgrove itself. Whether it's the peaceful havens of our green spaces or the proud reminders of our industrial heritage, Hazelgrove has it all. We have the Peak Forest and Macclesfield Canals, with one of the steepest lock flights in the country, and our beautiful rivers, the Goit, the Mersey and the Tain. It's no wonder so many people want to call our area home. Our, river, our rivers would be even more beautiful, of course, if the water company wasn't pumping quite so much sewage into them, and we very much look forward to the government plans to clean up this scandal. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the people who really make our community. From starting point social enterprise in Woodley, giving some of my more mature constituents confidence to get online and tackle digital exclusion, to the Cherry Tree Project in Romilly, empowering young people to live their best lives, or NK Theatre Arts, working with children and adults of all abilities across the borough to use creativity and the performing arts to transform lives. Local people have many of the answers we seek on how to fix the problems we as a country face. I see my job here and the job of this house to empower them, not to tell them what's good for them. I'm a Liberal and I'm a Liberal Democrat and we exist to build and safeguard a fair, free and open society in which we seek to balance the fundamental values of liberty, equality and community and in which no one shall be enslaved by poverty, ignorance or conformity. <laughs> I joined the Lib Dems and got involved in politics because shouting at the television wasn't bringing about the changes that we need. <laughs> My constituents have been very clear with me that their top priority is our local health service. Now, my constituents shouldn't have a hospital that is literally falling down. They shouldn't have to wait months and years for treatment, and they shouldn't have to struggle to care for their loved ones. The phenomenal staff at Stepping Hill Hospital shouldn't have to wade through flooded corridors to get to their patients, because yet another pipe has burst as it did this last weekend. Stepping Hill Hospital must get the repairs it needs and we need a new additional hospital in the town centre so that local people can get the health and social care services they deserve. I will not rest until they do. Now I couldn't possibly make my first speech in this house without mentioning the last Liberal Democrat to represent my community, Andrew Stunnell. Andrew was the MP for Hazel Grove from 1997 to 2015, and he was that rare kind of politician who gave politics a good name. He was an MP who set the standard to which all who came after him are rightly held. He was interested in doing something, not just being something. He put his constituents first, and he brought about changes in the law, both as a minister and as a backbencher, and he made things better for the whole country. As a minister, he delivered the Localism Act, 
But as a backbencher, he came top of the private members' bill ballot in 2003. And this resulted in the Sustainable and Secure Buildings Bill becoming an Act of Parliament in 2004. But more than all that, he was one of the warmest, kindest people I have ever met. He was the kind of person you want on your team, hardworking, honest and kind. He helped me work out what it was to make a difference in public life. The people of Hazel Grove, the whole Lib Dem family and I will miss him and his guidance hugely. I'm the first woman to be elected as the MP for Hazel Grove and I take that responsibility really seriously. I am especially delighted to be a member of the largest group of Liberal Democrats ever elected to this House. There are 73 of us if you include the Right Honourable Jenny. <laughs> I went to a comprehensive school and I was the first member of my family to go to university. And before deciding that shouting at the telly wasn't bringing about the changes that I wanted to see in the world and that standing for elective office was the way to be part of that change, I worked as a business, in a business, as a director of client relations where my clients were big pension funds. They were charities and they were foundations. And then I was a chief exec of a charity educating women and girls in the developing world. I've also been lucky enough to represent some of my constituents for the last eight years as an elected councillor for Bredbury Green and Romilly on Stockport Council, a role I have loved. And I'm one of a rather large number of colleagues who come to this house knowing firsthand the value of local government and the desperate need for it to be funded properly. Yeah. So to the substance of our debate today, Madam Deputy Speaker, on standards and on modernisation. And I think the main thrust of what we've heard from the government and from the Leader of the House, that any further roles should benefit an MP's constituents is absolutely right. In the short term, we should, of course, stop MPs taking on roles as paid parliamentary advisers, strategists or consultants. And in the longer term, daylight is often the best disinfectant. And I'd ask the Leader of the House to consider whether publishing any employment contracts for outside arrangements with suitable reductions and the transparency that would bring would allow constituents to judge for themselves whether they think they're getting value for money from their MP. And as a new MP, I am struck and more than a little bemused by some of the wonderful conventions and habits of this House. I think taking it as read that colleagues are honourable is a good thing. And I think referring to one another as the member for our constituency act as a really powerful reminder of who sent us here. But I'm also struck by how much modernisation is needed and we on the Lib Dem benches look forward to supporting the government where we agree. I would though expect us to urge, persuade and on occasion push the government to go further and faster to make us the most effective we can be because our constituents deserve no less. With so many newly elected colleagues, we have a cracking opportunity to change this place for the better. It could be so much more efficient and so much more effective. And let's do that with fresh eyes before we're all too institutionalised and think that some of this stuff is normal. <laughs> but that's also going to take some courage from the new government because making processes and procedures less obscure so that more people understand them and making this place more efficient will mean MPs have more power and the government slightly less of it. And governments, and I'm guessing especially governments with new large majorities, will probably go rather fond of that power quite quickly. So let's get cracking. Alongside modernising this place, we should of course reform our politics and our democracy more fundamentally. The House of Lords should obviously be elected, 16 and 17 year olds should be able to vote and we must replace the antiquated and deeply unfair first past the post system with a fair proportionate voting system. I look forward to making the case for these changes during my time here. Madam Deputy Speaker, this election was the fourth time I have stood to represent the people of Hazel Grove as the Lib Dem candidate and it probably takes a certain sort of stubbornness, resilience and determination to do that. It most certainly takes the support of your family and especially of my partner Ed. I am so grateful to them. 
Our mischievous rescue dog, Bonnie, hasn't quite made up her mind yet what she thinks about me working away from home rather more. But I hope to be able to convince her that winning is better than losing, as it undoubtedly is. Because winning enables you to get stuff done. And there is a lot to do. It is the honour of my life to be elected to represent my phenomenal community, the people of Hazel Grove constituency. They will be at the heart of everything I do here, and I hope I do them proud. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.